My name is Jan Bertrand, and I'm responsible for program development at the Continuum Discovery Center in Kerkraan. I will talk about prototyping, and prototyping is an experimental process within design thinking. Prototypes help to refine and validate ideas and designs so you can release the right product, concepts or service. It is important when prototyping to pay attention to four key considerations. People, objects, location and interaction. Because they affect how your prototype will work and what to observe in testing sessions. Prototypes often fail when tested. This shows where the flaws and defects are and sends the team back to the drawing board to refine the proposed solution based on real user feedback. Several studies show that early stage prototyping and testing are about 100 times cheaper than changes made in a later stage of the product development process. So keep in mind that prototyping is all about trial and error. It is an iterative process that typically requires several stages of revision. There are different degrees of prototypes expressed in fidelity. Fidelity refers to the level of detail and functionality you include in your prototype. Usually, this depends on the development stage in which you are working. Low fidelity, for example, could be sticky sketches and notes, which are ideal for brainstorming. These quick and inexpensive variations allow easier changes, test new iterations and really encourage design thinking. It is far easier to redo parts of your design based on user comments in real time while gathering feedback on your low fidelity prototype. On the contrary, hi-fi prototypes are the last step before the final development. This includes, for example, visual design like color, typo or functional page layout. Hi-fi prototypes can almost represent the final product or service. It is important that it lets users experiment and interact with the prototype just as they would with their final product, offering them the opportunity to give focused feedback. Another way of prototyping is role-playing, also called experiential prototyping. It's a method that allows your design team to explore scenarios within the environment you are targeting physically. You can make the best use of role-playing in capturing and expressing the user's emotional experience when using a product or participating in a service. You can also use it to gain an empathic understanding of your users through simulating what they are experiencing. Empathy with users and stakeholders is on the core of the co-creation process. Prototypes are usually not self-explanatory. During the process, testing is crucial and to ask the right question to get the correct and useful information. For getting the right feedback from the user, it is necessary to investigate thoroughly, test in the right context, be aware that users communicate in different ways, for example, by talking, posture, gesture or behavior. Learn how to read in between the lines. Be critical, be selective and be cutsy. Prototypes turn an idea into a form to explore both technical and social feasibility. Whether an idea eventually fails or succeeds, Prototyping can help, for example, policymakers, researchers and others to make the idea more real before investing heavily in it. It helps us to sketch in low risk and low resources way how, for example, a new policy might work. Ideally, it can fail forward or point to better ways to pilot it more robustly. The focus is not on the final outcome, the success or the failure, but the focus is on the path and its learnings. Prototyping for policymaking is not an easy route. Policymakers use often the policymaking cycle. They start with problem definition, then they set the agenda, they formulate their policy, make decisions, implement the results, at the end there is some sort of evaluation. 
In design thinking, we ask policymakers to get rid of their routine and explore new, uncertain ways of policymaking. Prototyping can interfere with the way they worked for many, many years, and that means uncertainty. Prototyping for policymaking actually asks people to change and adapt their routine in a new way of working. That's why prototyping and policymaking is all about the right mindset, expectation management, change management, empathy, communication, and having an open mind. Prototyping and policymaking means review on the base of the feedback from citizens and stakeholders. In the traditional way of policymaking, policy reviews are seen as a failure. When failure is not a problem in prototyping for design of products or services, it can be a problem in an environment with a high level of risk aversion. Cube Co-Design Canvas is partly based on the Design Choices Framework for co-creation. This is a framework that addresses the complexity of co-creation projects and processes. It takes into account different variables and uncertainties that can influence that process. By gaining insight into these variables and how they are linked, you can adapt relevant methods and activities accordingly at different times in the process. In contrast to a concrete step-by-step -step plan, this canvas offers more flexibility to react to unexpected events and developments. It helps to improve a co-creation process, but also to plan and evaluate. I would like to conclude with the following tips. Visualize it and build it. You're going to have uncertainties about your design until you build it and experience the flaws. Be fast and keep it simple. The result of a good design revolves around understanding the end user and providing a solution to a problem they are facing. Focus on that solution. Be empathic to understand your end user and stakeholders. And maybe the most important, fail fast, fail often.